Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about camera crane. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand this is a cinematic tool, meaning uh, you can use it for your normal wedding and all that, but it's the tool is specifically designed for cinematic shots. Now, be mindful, there are uh, many aspects to making a quote unquote cinema. It's not just having a fancy camera. There are many ways of utilizing that camera that gives you that quote unquote cinematic feel. We already talked about Dolly. This is one of those tool that will also give you that enhanced feeling that the moment you utilize this thing people can easily recognize that you are doing something professional it gives that pro feeling now why do people want to use quote unquote crane well it allows for great reach exactly like a normal crane does think of it this way you are uh, covering a uh, you know a venue where you have a large concert going on so you have stage that you have to cover and you have large group of people so you want to cover stage directly from front it's like uh, things are happening here i want to focus directly from here you can put a camera there but problem is people want to pay for that places so you do not want to block it with camera equipment how can you bypass that on the side you will put a camera spot and then utilizing a crane you can directly get from the center line like you will be exactly on the center line you will not interfere with the people behind and you may be like oh, can't we do that with drone a drones that can carry uh, such a heavy camera professional tv broadcast level camera are idiotically expensive b they require a licensed operator c they are very loud d uh, there is a, always a probability that it could fall which has has happened in olympics once so be very mindful so that's why this uh, reach is desired in many scenarios and not to mention not reach as in like i'm giving you one perspective of that uh, it's up to the user who can think of many ways of utilizing it. heck you can have a basketball court MP, like even in romantic movies people utilize this sort of thing so it's up to you like uh, what you can do with it it just increases your reach and in terms of motion, uh, many of the arms are like kind of fixed length, so they do not change in length, but some do. The moment you add that aspect to it, the complexity of motions that you can create is mind-bogglingly amazing. The things you can create will confuse people. It's like, how the heck is happening? And then it comes in all shapes and sizes. So you could have a scenario where it's like, hey, this is for my home shop. Uh, like, you know, I work in this workshop. I want a camera equipment here. So you will build a system that is very small. And again, you want to uh, sim like, you know, giant system. You will not make it very fancy, but you will make it very tall. So it will like, you know, 30 feet arm or 40 feet arm so that's up to use it comes in all shapes and sizes now we have to understand the complexity aspect of it. because if you strip down if you're like okay let's strip down a jeep what does it is well it's just a two parallel arm that's it nothing more than that so you may like uh, if a crane can simply operate in one boom then why the heck we need two of them why there is always two well, one is the main arm that is always, uh, you know, carrying the load, which is the main structure. The second one, the parallel arm is basically for the orientation, because without that, if you have a system locked like this, you will have this. You don't want that. You don't want camera to look like this. You want camera to go up and down like this. So in that scenario, having that second system provides you a pivot, which allows you to go like this. Your camera basically gets a platform that is completely stable. That platform is stable in vertical direction. Now, on top of that, that, that is all well and good enough. People have, like in old times, we no longer do that, uh, but people in old time put actual human there with a, like a camera and cameraman. Like everything is there, just go YOLO on it. But you can see that like, it's very dangerous because if that person falls, there's a very serious chance of injury or even death. So uh, this is now abandoned. And uh, if that basic system is not good enough you could also have multiple locking mechanism which would allow you to achieve unique things for example especially if you see any modern camera which has way too many uh, cables that are coming forward to it i'm not talking about stabilization cable you will look at that cable you like dude that cable is running parallel to the system it would be acting as a locking system so it will not only allow you to look like this but it will also allow you to turn so meaning you can have like a slider kind of feeling of course the slider will have an arc because again it's a rod from a fixed point of view but again do that with a system that has a retractable arm now you can have a complete slider motion utilizing arm system so amazing things can be achieved and because of the fact that uh, now we have gimbals that are super cheap and gimbals also allow for stabilization uh, people can achieve completely uh, remote operation system so uh, instead of having complex mechanical system which we used to be done in 1990s now it's like just just have a basic arm just have a hinge there and just hang a uh, basically gimbal there don't think about anything else and remote controls are now very very popular now it always requires counterweight now counterweight on a fixed arm system is a fixed because again the length is fixed 
least and even if you change the camera equipment you will know like i'm adding this much uh, basic camera equipment i have to add this much counterweight but because of the retractable arm design you will always notice the uh, modern hollywood ones they have a counterweight that moves back and forward like why the heck it's doing that so it can retain uh, that um, moving forward and backward it's not moving back backward and forward uh, you know while you are setting up it moves backwards and forward during shot so it cannot become unstable during that so it needs uh, basically counterweight that is mobile on the arm itself so it can move backwards and forward and the whole unit can be dolly mounted dolly is a track basically that allows you to do the system now imagine a dolly then you put arm on it so the amount of scenes that you can create the amount of camera movement that you can do it can only be exceeded by a drone and be mindful because like uh, these things are a fixed system you will have a scene where you know a person is directly going from a car to a basically a window to other person's kitchen and all that just you see that straight shot like almost a sniper kind of shot sometimes it's done in cg sometimes they are utilized done in, uh, doing car uh, car i'm saying basically crane arms crane arm going on a uh, dolly track directly so that gives you that feeling that you know sniper bullet kind of feeling can that be done with a drone yes and no yes it physically can be done problem is the drones are generally much huge that can carry cinema camera so if you want to do that with cinema grade equipment your doors have to be like almost open area you can do that but if you have to go through windows good luck with that so that's why it's still used like that yes you can do a lot of things with uh, drones but uh, it's still much more preferred and not to mention if uh, you're talking about on-site audio recording forget about drones now let's look at DIY option. Now DIY options are generally recommended if you are working with mobile or action cams. Nobody is gonna suggest you buy a very equipment, uh, expensive equipment if you wanna only utilize your mobile phones. Mobile phones are also a bit drop resistant, so even if your equipment fails and it drops, there is a very good chance it will survive. And action cams, they are far more robust, so you don't have to worry about it. And they are also light. Now. People will flat out always advise you the moment you start to go above from uh, action cam to let's say a mirrorless camera or DSLR go with a metal system because if you drop this sort of camera they are not very strong so you really want to utilize metal and I mean like a good quality metal don't try to buy the cheapest metal you can because metal buckles under load if you have a very weak metal it could so you really want to invest in good quality metal if you want to invest on an expensive camera and uh, you can go from super simple which is just a two parallel arm with like you know jump something like this just two parallel arm that's it just a platform and you are mounting on it or you can go complicated like this which also has that uh, pulley system that i specified it will allow you to achieve that slider motion or this person that has like multiple uh, cable system which will allow him to uh, you know position the camera even though arm is in use so you can go YOLO on it. People have gone YOLO on it. Or sometimes people just put a gimbal there. And now you need a gimbal that allows you remote control. If you can find that, something that allows you to remote control over Wi-Fi or you know use other mobile phone as a remote, you can do amazing things with that. And it has the luxury of being tailor-made for your size. What does that mean? That simply means uh, this 3d uh, printed one that i'm showing here i provided a video down below it was built for a workshop it was like this this is my workshop this is how big it is and i'm gonna make something that fits this not gonna make it too big not too small so that's the whole point of it and uh, all those things you once you start to see that like people have achieved amazing work with it then the question becomes like why the heck you will not just stop here well the reality is this puppy will never achieve pro level of smoothness like especially with light of the camera you can literally notice that it's like wobbling left to right even on dslrs and all that just now again if your camera has very good image stabilization it will compensate a lot of it and ideally you do not want completely dead shot where it's like everything is dead steady you don't want that so you do want some motion so it's acceptable but people who have worked with pro level equipment they can look at your footage and be like either you have used a very cheap uh, cheap equipment or you have utilized something diy there is a feeling to that you will notice that because the bearings are not the most optimized the weight is very little so inertia is not the, uh, very high so you can notice that you can feel it it's very good it's amazing if you have nothing then you jump into this this is amazing but there are limits to this then we come to the pro level now pro level well uh, to give you a context of that how pro we are talking about it makes cinema camera i mean red re alexa and all those jazz starts to look cheap in comparison i mean some of these puppies are so powerful they can support two of them for 3d movies and all that jazz and the camera uh, basically it's almost like dollies so it's like you do not buy these things you rent them out that's how expensive they are and many combinations exist on this basically you can have a system that that's a fancy crane i'm, I'm like what's the point of calling it a camera uh, camera crane this i am pretty sure can literally pull out a car from a ditch so you can have that then you have uh, basically system mounted on a car now you're like why the heck you want to do that again racetrack 
Now, of course, the uh, F1 car will not be going at full speed of like, you know, 300 or 400 km per hour. But again, even if you can shoot, like actually shoot a scene at like, let's say 150 kmph, it, it looks far more realistic than if you're trying to do that with CG. And you can speed up the footage, especially if you are recording at high speeds. So people utilize that. And then you have a uh, a complexity options in there basically something that is super complex and waterproof now be mindful like you have seen many scenes where you know like person is falling from the sky and pachang goes into the camera and camera follows that how the heck that's happening first i used to think that's a, like you know a cgi thing many times people do that because again a, a crane that can afford to do that is a bit expensive so people will like you know cut two shots but sometimes they can actually just dunk the camera if the camera can be watertight uh, they will just dunk the camera it has been done and it continues to be done because it's the easiest way to achieve the actual feeling of that like you know person falling and boom, that feeling people do that so waterproof dollies are also there uh, dolly, I'm saying, grains are also there and then you have portable options where you just all you want to do is like a basic shot you do not need to be super expensive there are portable shots like which can be carried in only two briefcase now why would people want to in invest this kind of money which makes cinema camera look easy well they are smooth i mean butter on top of butter like think of it this way like there is a f1 driving and there is a car driving on top of that there is a jig like that, how smooth it has to be to even have a footage that's like, you know, uh, you can show to someone without, uh, you know, inducing vomit. Now, it does become a consequence like many uh, artists as in directors and uh, photographers do not like the idea of having absolutely steady shots because it does feel a bit awkward because even when humans are walking, we are going like this up and down, up and down. So we have, we expect a natural motion to things. We do not expect to like... We are not a robot like that. So many times you will notice that even if they have equipment that is stabilizing the hell out of it, they will try to have a vibration motor there that is like, you know, shaking the things up a bit. Just so it gives that little bit of feeling. So you, you really don't want. And again, if they have a dampening setting, basically how uh, dampening, how much dampening is happening from the gimbal system, they will let, let it down. It's like, relax a bit. Because again, that's how you feel it. It's like if you are driving F1 car going through around a curve, it's supposed to go da, 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 da. that curve supposed to feel like that. Now again, you did a smooth thing. It won't feel but the moment you uh, you know let the gimbal be like hey gimbal relax don't try to like you know remove every single bump out now you start to have that feeling it's like whoa it feels and sometimes you can have michael bay then you were less me you know go you on it so that's up to you that's why these are pro uh, level equipment this is not something that you can just like i'm gonna buy it good luck with that you read very deep pocket for that so this was my presentation on camera uh, cranes. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.